These cupcakes may be gluten-free, but my script certainly isn't. Gluten, 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 gluten. Hello, my dears. I hope you all are ready for another episode of Bake Me Up Buttercup. Today, we will be focusing on a much requested type of recipe, and that is gluten-free baking. Now, personally, I have very little experience working with gluten-free flours, so I have decided to enlist some help. I picked up this incredible cookbook called Baked to Perfection, which is all about gluten-free baking. What I love about this book is that it is not only chock full of incredible looking recipes, but it also delves into the science of gluten-free baking and how it works. The author Katerina, who also runs a great baking blog called The Loopy Whisk, has a background in chemistry and brings that knowledge and research into her baking in the best way possible. The recipe I have chosen today is a delightful looking vanilla cupcake recipe complete with a Swiss meringue buttercream frosting. I can't wait to get started on this new baking adventure. Let's not waste another minute. In order to talk about gluten-free baking, we first need to talk about what exactly gluten is and its purpose in baking. Gluten is the name given to certain proteins that are found in grains such as wheat, rye, and barley. In baking, gluten's main purpose is to provide structure and elasticity to your baked good, and it also affects how moist or dry the final product will be. With this in mind, the idea of baking without gluten can seem very daunting. Simply substituting a gluten-free flour into a traditional recipe is likely to result in a less than stellar outcome. So working with recipes designed specifically for gluten-free baking is key. There are also a considerable number of different gluten-free flours and blends on the market now. And I love how this book goes into detail on many of the different types, how they work, and even recommends different blends depending on what you are baking. For my bake today, I will be using King Arthur's Gluten-Free All-Purpose Flour, which is a blend of different gluten-free flours, but does not contain xanthan gum, which we will get to in a moment. In a large mixing bowl, measure out 200 grams of gluten-free flour blend. A quick aside for my fellow U.S. viewers, as this author is from the U.K., all the recipes use weighted gram measurements. If you're used to volumetric measurements, this might be confusing. However, there is a conversion chart in the back of the book that may help, though I would urge you to consider trying weighted measurements. If you remember from my orange pound cake recipe earlier this year, I recently switched over to weighted measurements in all of my recipes, and it is life-changing. A kitchen scale can be quite inexpensive, and the accuracy and time saved is so very worth it. Next, we will add in 60 grams of almond flour. Almond flour has a higher fat content than other gluten-free flours, so it helps the cupcakes retain their moisture and keep them from drying out. If you are allergic, Feel free to substitute with an equal amount of the gluten-free flour blend. Add in 200 grams of sugar. The recipe calls for caster sugar, which is a finer ground form of sugar. Alas, it is not readily available in my area, so granulated sugar will have to do. Whisk in three tablespoons of baking powder, one quarter teaspoon of salt, and one half teaspoon of xanthan gum. Now, xanthan gum is a very important component of gluten-free baking. This is basically going to be your gluten substitute, acting as a binder to give your bakes that much needed structure and elasticity. It also absorbs and retains moisture at a very high rate, which helps keep your bake from drying out. Now, some store-bought, gluten-free flour blends already contain xanthan gum. However, this book recommends adding it yourself so you can control exactly how much goes into your bakes. Just be sure to check the flour that you are using to be certain it doesn't already contain it. 
Our next step is to add in 130 grams of softened unsalted butter. Using a mixer, we will work the butter into our dry ingredients until we get a texture resembling breadcrumbs. Now, if you are used to making traditional cakes, this method may look a little different. This is called the reverse creaming method. Typically, many cake recipes will call for the butter and sugar to be beaten together until pale and fluffy. This creates many small air pockets, which expand in the oven and create a very fluffy and delicate texture. This is what we refer to as the creaming method. However, according to the author, this process can cause uneven aeration, a heavily domed top with a possibility of collapse, and a higher chance of drying out. In the reverse creaming method, the flour particles are coated in butter fat particles, meaning less air is trapped in the mixture. The result will be a finer crumb, more even aeration, and perfect flat top, at least according to the recipe book. I have never attempted this method before, so I'm very curious to see if it works out. In a separate bowl, let's combine 160 grams of whole milk. Two eggs. Two egg whites. One teaspoon of vanilla. and one tablespoon of lemon juice. The lemon juice is just here to add a little bit of acidity to interact with the raising agents. It won't affect the flavor of the cupcakes. Let's whisk these all together. Because gluten-free flours often absorb more moisture compared to wheat flour, they require a higher ratio of wet ingredients to help keep the cake moist and avoid it drying out and being crumbly. Now we will add the wet ingredients into our flour mixture in two separate batches mixing well between each addition. One of the benefits of working with gluten-free flour is that there is no risk of over-mixing your batter. When making a cake with wheat flour, you must be careful not to mix the batter too much as it can cause excess gluten development and result in a dense and chewy cake. It's nice to not have to worry about that aspect when working with gluten-free flour. It's time to bake our cupcakes. I have here a 12-hole muffin tin that I have lined with paper liners. Let's carefully fill each liner about three quarters of the way full. I've got my handy dandy cookie scoop to help me out here. This certainly does look like a lovely batter, doesn't it? I'm so very excited to see how it turns out. Now the recipe states this should only make 12 cupcakes, though I feel like I'm going to end up having some batter left over. Hmm. Now we just need to bake these at 160 degrees Celsius, that's 320 degrees Fahrenheit, for 22 to 24 minutes. A toothpick inserted into the center of the cupcake should come out with just a few moist crumbs attached. Allow to cool in the tins for about five minutes, then transfer to a wire rack to cool completely. While our cupcakes are cooling, let's work on the buttercream frosting. Now there are many different types of buttercream frosting, but this recipe calls for a Swiss meringue buttercream. This is actually my personal favorite type of buttercream, and I realize that I have yet to make it here on the show. Let's rectify that. To begin, we will need a heat-proof bowl. Combine six egg whites, 375 grams of sugar, and one quarter teaspoon cream of tartar. Place this over a pot of simmering water, making sure that the water in the pot is low enough that it does not touch the top of your bowl. Stir frequently until all the sugar is completely dissolved and the mixture reaches 65 to 70 degrees Celsius or 150 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's transfer the mixture to the bowl of a stand mixer fitted with a whisk attachment. 
careful because it's very hot. Mix on medium high speed for about five to seven minutes until the mixture has cooled down and forms stiff peaks. It is essential that the mixture cools down to room temperature before moving on. This meringue base is what will provide the structure for our buttercream, as opposed to American buttercream, which relies on a large amount of powdered sugar to give it shape. This means Swiss meringue buttercream is far less sweet than American buttercream, with a delightfully fluffy and smooth texture. Now we will switch to a paddle attachment and slowly add in 400 grams of softened, unsalted butter with the mixture running at medium speed. Add in about one to two tablespoons at a time and wait until the butter has fully incorporated before adding more. Do not panic if your mixture begins breaking down and looking curdled during this process. This is completely normal. Just continue mixing and it should come together. Add in one teaspoon of vanilla and one half teaspoon of salt and mix until combined. Now doesn't that look so fluffy and gorgeous? It's time to decorate our cupcakes. Oh goody! As you can see here, there are 15 cupcakes when the recipe did say that it makes 12. What I learned though is that the recipe called for muffin tins and I used cupcake tins. Now I always assumed that those were the same thing, but when looking it up, it seems that muffin tins are often a little bit deeper and a little bit wider. Isn't that interesting? So it makes sense that I ended up making a little bit more than the recipe said. You can also see that they do have these gorgeous flat tops, just like they said with the reverse creaming method. Isn't that neat? Now I filled a piping bag fitted with an open star tip with the buttercream. Let's pipe the frosting onto each cupcake. The best part about frosting cupcakes is that you can put as much or as little as you like on each one. I personally prefer a rather generous portion on my cupcakes, but there is really no wrong answer. And for a finishing touch, let's add some fun and colorful sprinkles to make them pop. Yee, sprinkles, yay, I love sprinkles. Oh my, aren't they just perfect? And now for the best part, the taste test. I know it's not conventional, but I've cut myself off a few pieces here to eat with a fork because, well, I just don't want to get icing all over myself. I can't wait to see how they taste. Mm, the crumb looks so moist and delicate. That is delicious, truly delicious. That's quite good. To be honest, if you handed me this cupcake and didn't tell me anything, I would have thought it was a normal cupcake. Like it, it just, it tastes like a cupcake. It tastes so like a vanilla cake. <laughs> delicious, moist, buttery, vanilla. The texture is so smooth and delightful. I will say I've had many gluten-free bakes, which while they were nice, had a very certain distinct texture to them. And I am not finding that in this. What an absolutely delightful recipe. Yeah, I feel like you get that, like, you have a very high potential to get that drier texture and a little more crumbly, but this has like a moistness that you'd expect from, you know, a regular gluten, gluten-full cake. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mm, I am in love. This is just incredible. Absolutely. You just have to try this recipe. Check out this book. I am so impressed. I can't wait to try some more recipes in it. In fact, I'd love to hear if there's anything else you would like me to try in this. There's actually a recipe for shoe pastry, which I find very fascinating. Maybe I should give that a try one time. Mm, but yes, this is so good. Absolutely. And that Swiss meringue buttercream, perfection. Just 
Mm. My favorite butter cream. A winner, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining me on this fun and fascinating gluten-free adventure. I can't say enough good things about the Bates to Perfection cookbook. I absolutely recommend checking it out. It has everything from cookies, cakes, pastries, and even bread recipes, all completely gluten-free. I will put a link in the description below to find the book as well as the Loopy Whisk baking blog, which contains all sorts of gluten-free as well as other allergy-friendly recipes. And if you are looking for more gluten-free recipes from me, be sure to check out my almond flour chocolate chip cookie recipe. Yum, yum. Much love to all of you. Until next time. Mwah. Now some store brought. Now some store bought. Now some store bought. Gluten. Store bought gluten-free flour blend. Okay, look, I can do it. All right. Now some store bought. <laughs>